I'm not going to start. Somebody else is going to introduce this. Welcome to the second day of the Image Conference here in Brussels. My name is Tony Scott and I've been a cameraman for ITV News UK for 36 years. In that 36 years I've been to 87 countries and had the opportunity to film and interview people like the Queen, Prince Charles, when he went to the Himalayas with Camilla. I also interviewed Diana, I've interviewed uh, Prince William and Kate when they got married, uh, Nelson Mandela, eight Prime Ministers from the UK. Uh, I also met Phil many years ago when his dad run the local youth club, that's how we become friends. And anyway, without no further delay, here's Phil with his talk, A Personal History of Filmmaking in ELT. Hope you enjoy it. And there's a train or what you call that, but uh, so this is a potted history of my personal history of filmmaking, sometimes with students and sometimes just for pleasure, not with students at all. So I'm going to take you back to 2006 and I did a, a stunt, I did a fundraising challenge. It was on an old clipper ship that's moored in my hometown of Wales next to the sea in North Norfolk. And I used this camera, this old battered digital camera which doesn't work anymore. And I sat up a, a mast of a, a ship for seven hours through the rain and the sunshine and the rain and the sunshine. And it was a short 60 minute film that I put together uh, using Windows Microsoft Movie Player and it was about this fundraising challenge to go and work for an overseas charity in Africa. And it was also my first attempt at using Windows Movie Maker. I then went to Tanzania and I was there for three months working at an orphanage, Hisani Orphanage in Tanzania. And I basically captured almost everything. Um, I just kept, again, this camera was the one I used. Uh, the quality is terrible, the sound is terrible, the video picture quality is terrible. But I ended up making a two-disc film called Phil's Tanzanian, Phil's Tanzanian Adventure, um, which we had a cover which we put together by my friend in Cambridge. And it had 20 different chapters and covers three months' time spent volunteering at this orphanage near, near Lake Victoria. And I also took this camera up uh, Kilimanjaro, and I'll show you a clip in a minute of that. This is a clip of some of the kids at the orphanage. <laughs> time there uh, I had a little holiday for about a week and during that week I climbed Kilimanjaro and I did a film which you can see the title of which is based, some of you might know the reference but he does kill it, uh, which is a one hour film again using this basic camera and it was climbing the mountain and um, I had to keep the batteries warm at all times so they were in socks, in socks, in socks, in jackets, in all sorts of things because the issue of when you go up the mountain that high it gets very cold and if you don't keep the batteries warm then uh, then they won't work, and um, I had great pleasure in putting that together. I'm going to show you a clip of, uh, well, actually, if you go to the slides and you click on that link, it will take you, but I haven't got time to show you a clip from this at the moment of me reaching the top of the mountain. Uh, when I actually uh, did teaching for the first time, so I, I took a plane soon after Tanzania to South Korea, and I, this is when I was the first paid job in English language teaching. And um, this is a compilation of films and videos that I've made with students and ones not with students um, in South Korea. Uh, I did a promotional video called Teaching English in South Africa. Oh, sorry, South Africa? South Africa? South Africa? <laughs> so I've got David's session still on my mind from yesterday. It was a bit dystopian, I must say. Um, teaching English, in, and I produced this for a, a language school uh, that was based in Seoul, although I was actually in the south of South Korea, in a place called Changwon. And I did various things, like one more speech was about speech making, so the kids would have to practice and practice and practice day and night to do speech contests in the area. 
and um, Talent Market Day, which is a thing that we do at Christmas, which is getting all the young kids to uh, have to speak English, um, and they were fined and put in prison if they if they didn't speak English or use Korean. All, all sorts of young learners, really sort of fun. So that's why I sort of cut my teeth as a teacher. I did that for about a year. Um, this is me in my bedroom in Changwon uh, at the end of my very first day as a teacher. And this is October 20, 2007. Well, I can't put into words how my first day has been, really. It's just been amazing. Oh, what people. How do you encapsulate today? Well, it's just been nerve jangling. I mean, I was, I was calm enough. It's just that I was under the impression that I wouldn't. I was just going to observe for the first few days and not actually do any teaching, you know, break me in gently. But no, they're giving you a job, you're getting paid, so straight in there, in the deep end, you're teaching. The only good, well, one of the saving graces was the fact that I had a Korean sitting in the class with me all the time, so that kind of kept a bit on, on trouble. Um, the kids, as the lessons went on during the day, they sort of started about quarter to three, and each lesson went on, and there was only about five or ten minutes break between each lesson. The kids got older and older, so you started with like age six, seven, then it was 8, 9, 10, 11, up to the age of 16 at the end. And as the day gone on, you actually noticed how more tired the older kids got, because um, all the kids that go there, they all get up about 7.30, 8, they're off to school by 8.30, quarter to 9 in the morning, and the first lesson's at, at proper school. And this is where they go. It's like an after-school place, really, without any being any, being any fun. Um, yeah, just <sighs> entertaining. Uh, all the drama side of me came out, all the creative side of me came out, all the interaction side came out, you know, it, it's all there, it's all in me, I, I've got it, I, I've definitely got it, and I've come away today thinking, okay, this is hard, and probably the most challenging thing I have ever done, because it's in a foreign country, it's doing teaching for the first time, it's, it's really in at the deep end. Um, I don't seem to get a lot of support from the other teachers, I didn't seem to get much support the other day in terms of how's it going, how you doing, but it was there, just probably going to be. They just let me get on with it and, and probably let me find out the hard way. Really. But yeah, um, I certainly come away thinking this is going to be tiring, but it's going to be so rewarding. And, and it's going to be the making of me. I really think it is. And, and I think after one day, I know what I want to do. What I want to do. Okay, so that's when I decided I wanted to be a teacher. I thought it brought out the creative side of me, the drama side, the, you know, the hidden festival and all of that creativity <laughs> side. Um, so, uh, yeah, it was, it, was, it was ticking a lot of boxes. Naquilin, absolutely naquilin. Kids that age, if you teach young learners, I'm sure you know that it's absolutely naquilin, but I knew I wanted to teach. Uh, here's a little clip coming up of uh, a school production that we did at the same school. Uh, and, oh, if I never hear Little Red Riding Hood again, <laughs> it would be too soon. Um, yeah, Little Red Riding Hood, every month there would be progression, uh, end, of, end of school performance reviews, whatever, end of school shows, parents would come big show, um, this is why they paid their money, this is what the kids have learned, so a lot of pressure for them all to get their lines right, okay, this I think is a clip of me just getting ready for a dress rehearsal. Positions everyone, Scott, you need to be over here, Scott, over here, Lynn, where's Lynn, Lynn, Madeline, Tom, get over there, Lynn, over there, Lynn, there, Okay, right. Thank you in position. We're going to leave that. We're going to leave that. Okay. Okay, Fred. Young child in position. Are you ready? Okay, best performance wins the bread. Min, could you stand up, please? And give the hunter back his gun. Give the hunter back his gun, please. Have you got your knife, Hunter? Hunter? Hunter, Scott, have you got your knife? Well, you look like Rambo or Terminator. Terminator. <laughs> yeah, you loaded with weapons. I know. Here we go. Right, ready? One, two, three, go. Once upon a time, there lived a girl. Once upon a time, once upon a time, she was a girl. A girl lived in a tree. Tree, 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 Riding us, riding us, riding us, riding us. Okay, so 
So that was a, a, a fun year, uh, but a nappering year spent in South Korea. Um, during my holidays, I went to Japan and I did a thing called, it was a follow up to Philly Does uh, Kini, which was Philly Does Fuji, as you can imagine, climbing Mount Fuji. Uh, and that was done with uh, 17 Vietnamese people who happened to be living and working in Tokyo. Um, moving on to 2009, so about 10 years ago, I went to Nile and I did a, a, a CELTA, that's why I did my CELTA at Nile in Norwich. And um, the video about me teaching, there is a video, I'm not going to play the video, but there's a video of me teaching as part of one of my observed lessons, and I contributed it to Video in Language Teacher Education, this British Council book, uh, written by Steve Mann, Andrew Davison, Jacob Congo, and, and others, who were all based at the University of Warwick. Uh, that summer, my first job post-CELTA was to have fun, 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 and it was with young learners, teenagers. Uh, ages 12 to 17 at Belize uh, School in Cambridge, that's for Bell, Bell Educational Trust. And this is a compilation DVD of all the different videos that we made, that they made, that they gave to me, that we did together. All sorts of, a, a sort of assortment of different kinds of videos. Uh, a fun uh, English but activity programme in the summer, and I did it for two consecutive years. Um, one of the things we did was to do a film option. And the mostly Spanish students decided to do a zombie film, okay? So uh, we didn't have much of a budget. We had about £30 to spend. Mm -hmm. So we got a few props, a few white t-shirts, all about two quid each. Some tomato sauce, obviously. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine what that was for? So they designed it, they scriptwrited it, they storyboarded it, they chose who was going to play what role, whether it was runners or clapperboard operators or whatever it was, directors. The only thing I did, I just oversaw the whole production and made sure that they were on task and doing the job. You've got two weeks. It's not a lot of time. Even the Bell Handbook said you could not make a film in that time. We made it a 12-minute film called Epidemic, so popular, two weeks later I offered a film option class and some of the kids wanted to do Epidemic 2, the sequel. <laughs> okay, you probably wanted to see a little clip of this, so here's a little You must find the answer. Yeah, hello? Maria, I found the antidote. Who is this? Go to the central hospital, fine. Okay, we mustn't go to the central hospital, come on. China, I went to Beijing, and I was at an art school, Central Academy of Fine Arts in China, and so all of the students, as you can imagine, at an art school were very creative, so we made lots of films there. Uh, one of them was about a, a Project X thing, and they were given this kind of instructions to make this structure, and there's an example of one of the structures, out of certain materials, they were given a list of materials they could use, and the, um, the remit was to produce something that could be dropped from a five-story building and survive, okay? It was called Project X. And I made a film with their permission, uh, which they were involved with, which involved me interviewing them about their project. And here's a little clip. So a lovely position you've got with the light. Oh. You found a good position. Slowly disappear. Yeah. yeah. 
Can you tell me about your structure? The structure is... Because uh, I read about it and it said a muscle and I was very confused. I thought somebody had misspelt yes. a word, but no, it uh, really is a muscle. The whole thing is a little bit abstract. Yeah. But at the very beginning, it is it, it was a muscle. Mm -hmm. But um, by we uh, design it and we transform it. Of course, we cannot paint it. No. So we just uh, use the uh, cloth and make it just like a twisting object mm. and we mu we want to make it ma uh, more powerful right. so is that wrapping is that protecting it or is it stopping people or things getting at it no i just think it's uh, um, make it feel more powerful and more um, vividly vivid yeah and we put your heart inside it yeah and use a strand and put it inside and there's also a chain that goes around yeah, where yeah, the heart the is chain. what does that mean does that represent something um, struggle struggle <laughs> struggle and twisting the heart struggle yeah. or the yeah, the muscles struggle. struggle yeah both struggle can, can i see your sketch that you've just done yeah. you've just done this yeah in its current position. Yes, we you did. So I get you. You did many sketches before you made it, because I've seen them on yeah, the, in the Studio but, Wars. Yes, in the studio. Yeah, yeah. But not uh, in Studio the... One or Studio Two? Was it? Two. two. Studio Two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Many, many different designs. Well, many versions of the same thing. Mm. Uh, so you, was it a joint idea? Did somebody have like the main idea for this? Uh, we every people have their own idea, mm. and we uh, make a team. Then we put ourselves um, element together. Right, so you had different elements that you added to it. Okay. Uh, what they weren't told by the lecturers was that once the structures had been completed and displayed for everyone to see and filmed and photographed from every conceivable angle, the next day they were told to destroy the project. <laughs> that was the X part of Project X, the untold bit. <laughs> so they were a bit, <gasps> we're ready, we're going to destroy it. And then Subsequently, part of the film goes on showing them destroying it and how they felt about destroying their work of art. Oh. Cruel teachers. Yes. Yes. Cruel. Yes. <laughs> Away from the classroom, I taught a nine-year-old child uh, after school, four days a week, and that's him and his friend, uh, one winter's day. And I did a lot of things around Wang Jing, uh, including Winter Wonderland, visiting uh, 798 District, which is an arts museum. And uh, later, when I came back from China, which was in 2010, I went back to Bell for the second year, made another compilation of films. And this time, as well as doing a parody of Romeo and Juliet, again, student-led production called Bad Romance, they chose the music, they chose the props, they chose the, they storyboarded it, they scriptwrited it. I just got involved in the editing process because of time. And uh, a lot of fun making Bad Romance. Um, and if you go to my website, there's some outtakes from it. I can't show the full thing on, online because it involves, uh, it's, it's copyright, because Madonna, they chose Madonna's celebration and it's copyright. Um, but another thing we did at the end, for the last course, was do an option of them at students as writers and directors and also roving reporters. And we did a sort of breaking news theme for the last two weeks. And there's a clip of them uh, doing a sort of news program uh, a mock news program where they're presenting live on stage at the end of course show uh, and including clips from reporters which were pre-recorded and here's a clip of that. Now we'll start with our first news flash. Today, the 16th of August, the Cambridge Summer Jazz Festival has already started at the Soul Tree Disco. Have you ever been to a festival in a disco? I wanted to, but the, co but the concert was sold out in two days. No, the world thing. Our correspondent Monica is now on the spot at the Soul Tree to give us more information. Thank you, Daniel. As you can see, there is still a free even if the festival has already started. At the moment, the black eyed bees are performing, and afterwards, the red hot chili peppers will be on the stage. Unfortunately, the managers of the stars didn't allow us to film them while performing. We can't enter the Soul Tree, but we have got a special permission interview the stars after the concert. That's all I have at the moment. When I get more information, I will let you know. I'm Sophia, you are my son, an actual girl. So, did you know each other at the camp? Yes. And, um, do you stay for two weeks or longer? For six weeks. Of course. And in the middle of the sea, all time, any spirit of the person from different countries, you know, also, I think we know Russia. Uh, it's a good thing though. And you're from Russia? From Russia. Oh, Switzerland. Okay. So, um, and any part of the future? 
going from fun to a more challenging environment, at Riyadh in Saudi Arabia in 2011. Um, not a lot of film options there, it was a bit restricted in terms of use of music, use of uh, things that are a bit haram, uh, but I did manage to put a cultural induction for New Titus video together with some of the students, I've got a clip of that, uh, it's on my blog, um, and that was a little bit of using a proper video camera this time. Uh, it wasn't used, uh, it wasn't used as a promotional film, and the reason was because this guy wasn't wearing national costume, um, everything had to be exactly right. Um, back to school, I went to the University of Warwick, 2011-12. Uh, no actual films, just a lot of studying, but there is video footage from a module on professional development as a teacher and a parody that I did a cold play called uh, Paraphrase. Uh, and this was the time I graduated from Movie Maker to using TechSmith Camtasia Studio as my editing software of choice. And away from the spotlight, as some of you may know, I've not always been in long-term employment or full-time employment. Um, I've had some poor mental health issues. And in terms of my own personal story, um, I've had some time away from the spotlight, uh, not making many films, not, uh, not working. Uh, one exception was in 2013 when I went around Norwich with my uh, nine-year-old nephew, I think he was nine at the time, and filmed a trailer of Gorillaz called Go Go Gorillaz, and I did a speeded up six-minute version which was shared by the local press. Um, and moving on to 2017, 2018, two summers into UEA, um, the, did some group project work on a pre-sessional programme and I was teaching mostly media students. Um, I didn't choose that, they gave me media and film studies students. And um, yeah, so they were going out in Norwich, making little videos, presenting uh, research that they'd done, a little bit of research from, from people talking in Norwich, a lovely film of, of interviewing a homeless man by, by some of these Chinese students. Um, educational, uh, needy, um, yeah, I, it, it, I personally, I, I enjoyed doing that, and I think they enjoyed uh, experiencing Norwich for the first time and uh, yeah, practicing their film interests and, and filming interests. Um, more recently, I've got involved uh, much more with IATEFL as a committee member, and I've also presented my own research on the mental health of English language teachers. Uh, so I presented in Brighton in 2018, and I presented in Liverpool uh, this year, and I think between those, I think I presented in Malta uh, about mental health of English language teachers. So not a film as such, just a recording of a presentation, just so that if I don't capture uh, a presentation, then only a limited number of people are going to see it. And I thought with a topic like mental health of teachers in, in our industry, it was very important to share that more widely. So I'm uh, not afraid to be upfront, be filmed as I am being today. <laughs> and um, so just so things could be widely shared uh, amongst uh, teachers. Um, I've also done things like capturing events, so EMT Malta, I've been to two events in a row, can't go this year because I'm here, and I did a film for the Learning Technology Special Interest Group, uh, which is on the left, and then last year a film of just going around Medina. Nothing to do with students, nothing to do with education, just a film of people going around, I think Cathy is there, Cathy's who's not in the room, but she's at this uh, conference, and uh, Helen as well, Helen who's filming today, she was at this conference too. Um, now, going back to where we came in, the guy that introduced me was a guy called Tony Scott, and going back to 2009, um, I got some of his old footage, so he, he was into film and video, and Frank, you were, like, you're called VHS teacher, so he used to get video, old videotape with the old back, you know, big cameras, and he would film just footage of this youth club that, that I grew up in, that he grew up in, uh, that my dad and my mum ran on the Isle of Dogs in London. And this is his 1982 black and white footage from that time, which I interspersed and cut into my own film, which was called Alpha Grove Reunion. I have the DVD. Here's a clip of the footage, which I inter... I think this is the clip where I played the police over the top. Close 
Tony Scott, who you saw at the beginning, filmed that in 1982, and as I say, I cut it into my own film about the reunion. So this is my mum, my dad and my brother going back to the Isle of Dogs for the first time as a family and having a reunion for the club that they uh, used to run in the late 70s and early 80s. So a very personal film. This is the personal part, or one of the personal parts of, of why I'm talking about this. So it's away from the classroom, as it were. Um, Again, more personal films away from the classroom. So, as well as Afro Grove Reunion, which I've just shown you a clip of, I've done my, the wedding of my nephew and uh, his now wife. That was this year. My mother's 70th birthday uh, at Scornfoot Village Hall in Norfolk. My dad's walk for Parkinson's. My dad has Parkinson's, and he's done a, a, a two walks now at Blickling Hall and Estate in, in Norfolk for charity, for raise money for, for Parkinson's UK. And this is probably my favourite, which is me going around with my nine-year-old. She was nine at the time my nine-year-old niece, niece, Lily, and we're going around Norwich all in one day trying to spot 50 hares, sculptures of hares, which were dotted around the city of Norwich. And uh, I use this camcorder for most of it, so I'm going around following her through the streets and, uh, and busy, on a busy Saturday doing sort of this, got tracking shots all the time, you know, you see it in the movies. And um, a lot of fun putting that together. I mean, we did it, we did the 50 hares in one day, all on the 21st of July. Uh, and uh, a labour of love, I'd call it, a labour of love. Um, and this is the thing I find, is, is I like recording and documenting and filming, but I also like editing. Editing is my passion, whether it's editing words, in terms of proofreading and stuff with the LTC, or whether it's editing film, I love it. And as I say, I use uh, TechSmith Camtasia now for that. There are other, um, as I'm sure Frank knows, there's other video editing software that you can get, professional software. Um, and um, there's also Freedom Free software that you can get for mobile devices as well. Um, here's, uh, I think, is this a clip? Do I have a clip of Very, Very Lily? Not sure. <laughs> Do you get the can we get a lift? Tessellation. Isn't that a lever? 
Where? There's no lever in the Show me. Bar. Show me. I just want to look on the right, on the right. On the right. Look to your right. To your right, Lily. Lily. Show me the one in the fish bar. Wham! It's wham! It's wham! It's wham! It's wham! Wake me up before you go. Wow, I didn't know there was a wham one. Wham! We should play the wham music with that one. Okay, um, well, do you use a steady cam? I just think, yeah, I've, I've got a lot of time. There was only, there was only actually one more slide to show you, and I'll just, uh, because I'll have some time for questions, there's only one more slide to show you, and that was basically that, to bring you up today, I'm, I'm, I've decided to do a, a Learn English through film making course in the city of Norwich, and uh, I found a language school that's prepared to put this on, and um, the first course starts on Monday, with another course running on November, and the school have kindly said that uh, anybody that wants to do it, uh, anybody that's come to the Image Conference, or if anyone at the Image Conference goes back to their own schools, their own countries, and wants to get students interested in this, they're going to offer a 25% discount on the whole course in November. I've got a couple of flyers here about that, if you want to take one afterwards. Um, it doesn't seem to be going back, so I'll end it there and take some questions. Shine like an arc light Seem like a burn might sing when he was higher than heaven Higher than every other thing Some kind of arc light Sparks in the street I know that you've no answers All I need is for you to shine So you have two weeks where you are studying uh, English through film. So a lot of it's based upon Kieran's work. Um, uh, so his book and his website, uh, but I take bits from other sources as well. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, pedagogically sound in terms of it's, it's focused on, on language learning. And um, it's a four-week course, but in the last two weeks, we are gonna, we would make them, get them to make a film. So from storyboarding, script writing, coming up with ideas, uh, thinking about locations, types of camera shots, and it would all be hopefully done with mobile phone devices uh, and then edited on phone too. I mean, I've got Camtasia if needed, but it's again, it's about a being student-led, student, you know, mm. bottom-up student production, not not me going, this is what you've got to do. You know, very much. Do, what do you expect on the course, like 10, 15? Uh, no, not that many. Um, getting a new course, as some of you might know, getting a new course up and running is very difficult. Um, and so I said six, six would be a nice group. Uh, but the course would run with as little as four, because then you're going out into the street and getting volunteer actors, I think, and other people to get involved in that sense. Any other questions? Yeah, I've got a question about um, the behaviour in front of the camera. Um, I know, I know with, with the kids who I work with, yeah. um, there's a difference if I'm holding the camera yeah. or if they're holding the camera. Can, mm -hmm. you, can I like, experience 
Um, yeah, I mean, obviously with some of the films you show, like the zombie films, they, they were holding the camera, so they were directing, they were, they were much involved. I was taking two steps back. Yeah. And I guess so. I mean, the, the contrast clip is the Little Red Riding Hood clip, where I'm holding the camera, I'm in charge, I'm directing this, you know, I'm getting stressed about it. <laughs> So, yeah, I, I, I see what you mean in terms of you get a different thing. If they know that teacher's not there or is in the background, then a different kind of thing can be produced, yeah. Uh, what's, the, what's the students in South Korea when you were doing the filmmaking? Um, how do you stop them going into their mother tongue? Uh, I think the tendency would be when they're, like, they're trying to figure something out that they would quickly speak in Korean or... or do you, do you mean with, when we were doing what you saw? Just in general, in your experience of travelling, how, mm. how, do you, how do you manage that situation? Where well, in South Korea, it was pretty strict. Okay. So okay. We, were, we were told as teachers, and I was a English, my first language being English, obviously, but there were Korean teachers there also teaching. Uh, but they got in most, a lot of American and English teachers to um, deliver lessons. And we were told to clamp down heavily on Korean being spoken. Okay. It, there was just a strict kind of culture there. Mm -hmm. uh, and with these young learners, obviously there would be times they spoke Korean, mm -hmm. but we, we had a thing, you know that thing of you eat only English in class. Yeah. So it's not just signs, it's also uh, reinforcing that as well. Mm -hmm. In the corridors, not so much. When they're out of school, that's okay. Mm -hmm. But generally in the class time, we were told to, to keep it to English and try to... They were, they were more likely to end up being silent than they were <laughs> talking Korean with that kind of culture. Um, I felt sorry for a lot of the kids, to be honest, because especially with things like talent, uh, with uh, speech contests, some of them would be hand-chosen to give speech contests, and they'd get very nervous and stressed about it, and it was all about memoring, remembering lines, and it was all a rote learning sort of thing, as you, as you know, probably know. And, um, and I, would, I would have an hour, so at the end of the school, the school day, I'd have another hour with one of the students doing, going through, right, get it right, get it right, get it right. And then I said, no, right, time, time to go home, time to bed. Okay, and I went back to the uh, class, uh, the teacher's room and said, right, I think we've had enough for now. She says, no, she's got it right. Well, no, she's got this, she hasn't got this right, or she's still missing it. Right, I'm going to go back in and carry on. So it's like there was a culture of, she's, mm. they got it oh, really, really yeah. sort of tough. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I found it's like, because the kids, they get up at six o'clock in the morning, they go to school and they go to after school clubs and they wouldn't get back till 10 o'clock at night. Absolutely mm. shattered. Mm a culture which really, really was competitive and really pushed kids to, to, to study because uh, university places were limited. But it's so nice that you did a creative project with those children. Do you know what I mean? Like to, yeah. to kind of break yeah, that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the Little Red Riding Hood was, a, was an opportunity. There wasn't always opportunities to film. I mean, the clips you saw in the, in the piece when I'm giving that thing to camera about my first day, there were little clips that I took, uh, but I never filmed whole lessons. I never did that. But the only opportunity really to film was, was when uh, it was the end, of level speak, uh, con uh, the end of level presentations to parents, like you saw with Little Red Riding Hood. My only problem was it was Little Red Riding Hood, Little Red Riding Hood. Mm -hmm. the time, it was, I just got so fed up of it. <laughs> how was that marked, Phil? You know, that class, was it like a grammar class? Was it, uh, you know, how, how did this institution view that contribution that the children were making? I think that they, for a start, that, I mean, parents were paying money for their children to be there, so they wanted to see some evidence of their learning. And I think the school owners, uh, something called Junk Shul Academy, which is a chain of schools throughout Korea, they, uh, it was a business, and they wanted to put on this show to show that there was learning had taken place. And actually, what was on show was only their spoken English. You weren't seeing evidence of their written work, although homework was set, writing was set in class at, at other times. Um, but um, was the homework based on red writing? No, no, that no, that was a, of a side project. Okay. Um, the um, the written work was done in class, and they would have books official juncture books and they would write and they would take those to home to parents and you would mark their homework the next day and so there would be evidence of, of learning taking place. The show was just to show this is they they've gone from level five to level six or whether each you know, one year after the next one was, however they did it. Was that similar with the Spanish kids in Cambridge? Uh, uh, they have regular lessons. The Spanish kids had English lessons in the morning and yeah, then and then, and then activities in the afternoon and, and little field trips as well. So it was a combined language and activity programme 
with mixed nationalities. I mean, some of those zombies weren't Spanish, they were Russian. Mm. B1, A2 level Russian. Mm. Um, and then I almost typecasting because <laughs> the little, little spoken English going on when you were a zombie, you know. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I didn't choose that. They said, well, we'll cast the Russians as zombies. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so, um, uh, yeah, a lot of fun. A lot of fun, but but there's a lot. I mean, you do a lot of the English work in the classroom first, uh, and then what you see is, I mean, it takes a lot of effort to, yes. to put a, even a mini production like that together. You think you go out and you film, but but it's, there's a lot of work done leading up to that. But would you also formally assess their storyboards and their um, um, scripts and everything for the written component, or All, doesn't that necessarily? I would I would look at what they were doing, but only. It, only in, only in the sense that what you see on the screen, you don't see written work on the screen. No. So the writing that they do yeah. is a case of brainstorming ideas yeah. and collaborating. It's very much about collaboration. And um, I would oversee the whole project. It was not a case of, there wasn't time to go in and say, oh, you spelled that word wrong or yeah. things like that. So there was writing. Uh, in fact, in one of the clips, it's frozen, but I can't go back. But, but in one of the clips, there's a little uh, paper or sheet of paper with the director, uh, Javier's, uh, notes, all these notes, and who is going to cast, and little right. things, and I included that on the sort of DVD of it, or the original DVD version of it. So there was a lot of writing in the class, and then they'd yes. go off and they would film in the yeah. afternoons. But there was uh, a huge time constraint with mm -hmm. something like Epidemic and, and, and what we did there, and, and the parody, uh, Bad Remote parody that we did a year later. So you, I knew you had to write. You've got to, you've got to come up, focus, 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 and motivate. I'm there to motivate, oversee, make sure that everyone's kind of doing something. Yeah. Um, so I've got a facilitator um, role in that, in that sort of thing. Phil, uh, if you were to do a chart on the board of, of how you see yourself as a, as a person that's standing there, are you 10% doing movies? Are you 100% doing movies with kids? Are you 15% teaching grammar? How do you see yourself as a teacher? Um, I, um, so at, at times when I've done filmmaking, then I, that is front, has been front and centre, you know, learning this through filmmaking. Um, but most of the time, I haven't done this with, okay. with kids. Yeah, I don't see myself. I'm, I'm at the end of the day, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a teacher. I'm an EAD teacher. Don't do filming in class then. I'm an ESOL teacher with refugees in Norwich. Never film that. Don't film that because there's no, there's no need to film that. It's not about me. It's about language. It's about language learning. It's about passing exams. It's about passing tests. It's about progression. So most of my work has not been with films and filmmaking. I've just done a potted history, a potted personal history of when I have done it with, with, with learners. And what I've done away from the classroom as well. That's why I say it's a personal thing. It's a, almost a self-indulgent thing. There's no takeaways, by the way. <laughs> There's no takeaway. I'm not, you know, you can't go back to your class and go, I've got this fantastic, no, it's just me, uh, self-indulgent. This is what I've done over the last 12 years. Have you ever done anything with adults? Um, with the film? With adults? Not so much. I hope to soon. As I say, with this, with this new course that's starting, I hope to get young adults or adults. Yeah. I will be prepared to be flexible on the course, and depending, if I've got a group of four Spanish adults, for example, I would mould the course around their particular needs, their particular language needs, and their particular needs to uh, you know, explore their creative side. Yeah. So, yeah. And if we had a magic wand and said, you can have more of this or more of the normal teaching, which would you do? Yeah. <laughs> Can you tell? Yeah. I, mean, I love this. I mean, I love film, and we've talked about this briefly yesterday, but I love film. I've always loved film. I've always liked filmmaking, and I've been doing it, as I say, since 2006. And uh, maybe I'm idealistic, or maybe I'm a dreamer, um, and I'm not the only one. But the point is that, <laughs> the point is that um, this is what I've always wanted to do. So it's marrying my qualifications, my experience, with my hobby, with my passion. And... Okay, at the moment we've got not many students <laughs> who have signed up. Hopefully the course will run in November, uh, but if you would kindly go back and tell people that might be interested about the course, I'll give you my card or link to the website. If, if you go on my website now, the slides are on the website, including the last slide, which unfortunately I haven't been able to, to show you. I don't know if it's going to work now. It seems to have completely stuck. This. But my, if you go to, if you get your phone, I know you can't get internet here, but... My website is uh, teacherfilly.com, it's quite easy, teacherfilly.com, and the slides from today are on there, okay? The clips aren't, but all the original videos are on there as well. So teacherfilly.com, uh, that's it, teacherfilly, te teacherfilly, P-H-I-L-I, -I, like Philly does Philly, dot com, and it's all on there. So there's a section called videos and recordings, yeah? 
And uh, thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. 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 Thank you.